Um, so Dr. Violet Mokara works uh, at Barwon Health and with the uh, Barwon Southwest Regional Integrated Cancer um, Service and is going to uh, speak to us about the uh, evaluations of cancer outcome uh, study and registry. All right. Um, today, I'm just going to talk to you about a, um, a project that I've been w that we're working with um, at the Bowen Southwest um, Regional Integrated Cancer Service in Bowen Health, and just talk about how we came through um, the concept, the pilot, and transitioning to a clinical quality registry. So the initial pilot was called the Evaluation of Cancer Outcomes, which was actually a collaboration between the Victorian Cancer Registry, um, BizRix, and the Department of Health Victoria. So at the time, they chose the Bowen Southwest region because it was best representative of the Victorian um, population in, the, in its population mix and services as well, in the sense that Geelong is a major hub and it's supported by smaller regional hospitals. The aim of the pilot was to develop a standardized method of collecting tumor stage of diagnosis, prognostic indicators, treatment, and subsequent outcomes of all um, newly diagnosed cancer patients. And it was thought that combining this detailed information with routinely um, collected incident information would provide greater information um, to inform clinical and population health decision making. So in terms of the pilot, the 2008 and 2009 data was delivered to the VCR in 2011. From an ethics uh, perspective, um, all the data items that, that were collected during the pilot phase were actually covered under the Cancer Act. Um, and in terms of when the pilot was, com was completed, there was reflection upon the, the value of the data and it was clear that you know, there was great value in having this detailed data and outcomes for a whole geographic area and that's when the decision to, to transition to a clinical quality registry was made. So one of the key documents that, we've, we, that we used in this tra transitioning from the pilot stage to a clinical quality registry is the operating principles for clinical quality registries which is a document that's released by the Australian Commission for Safety and Healthcare. And one of, the, one of the main processes that you do need to have in place for a clinical quality registry is robust data governance. So the steering committee that was, uh, was actually established back in 2012, and they were really instrumental in transitioning from the pilot stage to the clinical quality registry as well as developing the, um, the policy um, framework, including how to access data, data security, and data management. So the steering committee um, reports to the BizRix governance group, which just contains all the CEOs of the health services across um, the region. In terms of representation, the steering committee has um, representatives from medical oncology, surgical oncology, um, epidemiology, health informatics, as well as some independence through primary care um, providers and consumers. Reporting to this group, we've got the management committee that, and they're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the registry. Um, the clinical governance community, um, committee, which is responsible for looking at the clinical uh, variation in data and overseeing the escalation policy of the, of the registry. And currently the data custodian is Bowen Health and that's where the registry is currently being housed. So there are eight health services across the Bowen South region, um, and of these, five are public and three are private, and they're all participants of the registry. Um, in terms of the consent model, while the opt-out consent uh, process model is the recommended model in clinical quality registries, we were actually able to successfully apply for a waiver of consent in the sense that the majority of the data that we're collecting is covered by the Cancer Act mandatory reporting requirements and is all collected as part of standard of care. Um, one of the main features that allows for data collection across this region is that the public hospitals are actually connected by the virtual network no known as the SWA uh, network, the Southwest Alliance of Rural Health. So in terms of recruitment, obviously complete um, recruitment of the population is, fundament, is fundamental to any registry. So recruitment into our registry actually occurs via the uh, Victorian Cancer Registry, 
So we get all the notifications that the hospitals will have provided to the, to the VCR and they're fed back into the registry. Um, and we collect information on all cancers, excluding all um, the basal and squamous cell carcinomas. And in terms of inclusion criteria, we're essentially looking at patients who are resident within the region and they were actually admitted into the health service and re um, received treatment for their cancer. So I'll just talk you through the data collection. So the incident notifications come from the VCR and that's actually through a secure portal. Um, and it's, it's uploaded into the database, which is known as the Regional Aggregated Cancer E-Repository. So I, I talked about the SWA network. So this is all within um, the Bowen Health intranet. So it's not an, uh, a web-based uh, platform. It's within a secure uh, Bowen Health intranet um, server. So once we've got the, the incidences uploaded into the database and have any exclusions excluded, from, um, from the Bowen Health patients, which make up about 50% of the patients in the registry, um, there's an automatic extraction of data that occurs from the information system. So that extracts all your chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and patient um, information, which greatly accelerates um, how, we can, how quickly we can collect the data. For the regional, um, private, and public health site, there's on-site medical record review and direct entry into the database, all still um, occurring within that secure firewall. Um, in terms of um, recurrence data, that's done um, periodically through medical record review. The, mortali the mortality data is fed from the VCR through, again, that secure portal, and that's data that's been ma matched from the birth, deaths, and marriages, as well as the National Death um, Index. So one of the main sort of strengths of clinical quality registries is the, is the ability to, <coughs> sorry, to measure quality of care and ultimately apply this to benchmarking and improving performance across your systems. So internationally, there's been a drive to measure quality of care. In the, in the US and UK, there's sort of a lot of movement in looking at um, cancer uh, quality of care indicators. And these indicators are usually used as, to assess performance as surrogates for outcomes. So most of the indicators um, that, we're, that they look at are mainly sort of process indicators looking at timeliness of treatment, appropriateness, and variation between centers. So in terms of our registry, so this is currently ongoing work. Back in 2010, we did a literature review and identified about 79 indicators across um, 10 tumor streams uh, that, were, that were quality, quality of care cancer indicators. These were, gen these were then shortlisted to about 50 based on the um, current data set that we have with the registry and that, that we could actually collect. Um, we're now currently doing some feasibility analysis and we'll then we'll be holding some um, consult consultative workshops with the tumor stream lead clinicians across the region to ensure clinical engagement and buy-in in terms of um, prioritizing indicators that are clinically relevant and are actually going to improve performance um, from the clinician's perspective. And hopefully from that process, we can then sort of prioritize and have a final set of indicators. So I'm gonna show you just preliminary data and two indicators. So the first indicator is a breast cancer indicator, which looks at um, proportion of women who receive radiotherapy within one year of diagnosis after receiving breast conserving surgery. And in terms of the evidence for this, phase three trials have shown that um, radiotherapy after breast conserving surgery reduces the, um, the probability of um, re, um, local recurrence. And in terms of the benchmark for this indicator, it's set at 95% and it's a UK derived um, indicator. So this is for patients diagnosed in 2009 and we've got the number of patients and then they're just separated in terms of age, in terms of recommendations to those who can ha who have to have radiotherapy. People with stage one, stage three cancer, those who've had breast conserving, oops, sorry, breast conserving therapy, mastectomy or surgery or surgery out of the region. And we can see those who've had, that had radiotherapy within one year was a proportion of about 87%. So one of the other um, aims that we, we hope to look to address when we hold the workshop is whether to use international benchmarks or use more locally derived um, target benchmarks. 
So the next indicator is the colorectal cancer indicator. This just looks at whether um, with more than 12 lymph nodes were pathologically examined. And this indicator essentially, the more, uh, the more lymph nodes are, that are examined, the better the staging and the better the treatment decision making. And this is set at an 80% target. So for 2009 um, data, um, we've got patients with colon cancer, stage one to three, and those who, that didn't have any preoperative pre procedures, and those that had more than 12 um, lymph nodes actually examined. And we can see that this, for this indicator for that year, the adherence um, was, a, um, was matching the benchmark. So in terms of the challenges we faced in terms of in establishing the clinical quality registry, one of the major issues was actually getting buying in and buying in in terms of establishing the software to be able to extract data from the clinical information systems. And it took a, a considerable amount during the pilot phase. But obviously the value of this is that you can limit the amount of time uh, needed for collecting data. Um, secondly, it was obtaining ethical approval. So ethics for registries is notoriously always difficult given the number of sites that you're dealing with and how many ethics committees you, had to, um, you have to work with. We only had to work with two HREC committees, but that took, from the initial submission to approval, took about nearly 12 months. And currently we're sort of working to see what kind of framework we'll be using in terms of then reporting um, the indicator work back to the participating sites and, uh, and ultimately improving um, performance. So in terms of future directions and conclusions, BizRix has really facilitated the cooperation across the um, health services across the region in being able to form this unique population-based um, clinical quality registry. And we can actually serve as a model for a state-based um, cancer <laughs> clinical quality registry. And we're aiming to have the da a data collection that is more current and up-to-date. And currently we're at 2011 across the region and 2013 for Bowen and Health. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge the team and the health information managers at all the sites. Thanks.